Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to Need Spire, a space where we build your concepts and you convert them into skills. This is Dr. Farhanda Sofi and I am glad to help you with your NEET and board exams. I have a series of short videos on my channel. Do check them out where I try to explain a bit difficult topics to you in an easier manner in a very short span of time. And if you are new to my channel, do consider subscribing and if you already watch my videos, thank you so much for the support. So our today's video will be on generation and conduction of nerve impulse. Again, you guys find it a bit difficult, so I am here to break it down to you. So let's start with the stages of nerve conduction. Now, before I tell you about the stages, as all of you know, the nervous system regulates most of the activities of our body through a current which is known as nerve impulse. Okay, so that is what we are talking about right now. We will talk about how the nerve impulse travels through the nerves and then how it is transmitted from one nerve to another by a structure known as synapse. Okay, so we are talking about the generation and the conduction and the transmission of the nerve impulse. Okay, now the conduction of nerve impulse occurs in three stages. Okay, the first one is polarization, then depolarization and then repolarization. May sound like tongue twisters, but trust me, they are these are very simple terms. See, polarization means resting. Okay, so in this stage, no impulse is coming and the nerve is in a resting stage. Okay, now once an impulse comes, what happens? The nerve goes into a stage of depolarization. That is the nerve gets excited. Okay, and after the impulse has gone, the nerve has to go back to its resting stage, right? That happens with repolarization. That is what's called repolarization, okay? From excited stage back to the resting stage, fine? So, a polarization, depolarization and repolarization, okay? Now, before we talk about these stages in detail, I want to tell you what is action potential, okay? See, action potential is nothing. It is just a fancy term that has been given to all of these stages, which is defined as the change in electrical potential associated with an impulse. It is just the same thing that I just told you, but in a fancier manner. So an action potential is nothing but the change in electrical potential associated with an impulse. You know, these polarization, depolarization, repolarization, what are these? These are just changes in the electrical potential in a nerve. These are currents, okay? In a layman's term, we can call them currents, okay? So this change in electrical potential is known as action potential. Now, what are the stages of the action potential? How does the nerve impulse travel in a nerve? See, starting from here, this is the resting stage or the polarized stage and the potential here is called resting membrane potential, okay, which is almost equal to minus 70, okay. So, here this is known as RMP, that is the resting membrane potential, no confusions, okay. Now, what you need for this potential to get disturbed is a stimulus, right. So, here you give a stimulus and this electrical potential gets disturbed and it goes towards the positive side, okay? Now, what happens is this stimulus can be of two types. Either it can be a strong stimulus or it can be a weak stimulus. See, if it is a strong stimulus and it is able to pass this threshold, that is the minus 55, it is able to bring the nerve into this minus 55 volt millivolts of voltage then what happens this threshold is crossed and an action potential is generated nerve goes into the phase of depolarization right but what happens if the stimulus is not so strong if the stimulus is weak like this or this what happens is it is not able to initiate an action potential and that is what is known as a failed initiation okay it is not able to it is sub threshold or failed okay if it is equal to the threshold if the impulse is equal to the threshold then what happens is action potential gets generated and we enter the phase of depolarization now what is happening in depolarization this is a gross idea i am giving you okay we will talk about it in detail in this video Okay, so just understand the terms I'm telling you right now. Depolarization is that the nerve goes into positive potential, right? It is going from minus 55 to 0 and then from 0 to almost plus 40. So it is going upwards into a positive potential, which is known as depolarization. How it happens is just know here that the sodium ions go inside. Okay, sodium ions go inside. I'll tell you about everything in detail. So don't worry. Now what happens when this depolarization is finished, then comes a stage of 
repolarization that is now the nerve tries to go back into its original negative potential which is known as repolarization now this fourth part is hyperpolarization what is hyperpolarization when the nerve goes into more negative potential negative than its resting membrane potential that is known as hyperpolarization and after that it comes back to its resting state that is the rmp so this is gross action potential we'll talk about it in detail now now see the first stage i told you is this one resting stage which is called polarization stage okay so this is the first stage we'll talk about the polarization state is where the nerve is in the resting membrane potential which is equal to minus 70 millivolt so focus on this part this is the resting potential okay focus on this part see now what you can see here is the outer surface is positively charged whereas the inner surface of the cell inner part of the cell is negatively charged okay that i just told you which is the resting membrane potential now why is this happening this happens because of more sodium outside and less potassium inside no doubt the sodium and potassium both contain one positive charge each but there is more sodium on the outer space than there is potassium in the inner space and how is this being maintained is by these pumps which are present here the sodium potassium ATPs okay what the sodium potassium ATPs does it throws out three sodium ions and in turn brings in only two potassium ions okay so three sodium ions are being pulled pushed out and two potassium ions are being pulled in right which creates a gradient between the surface of the neuron that is why the outer space is positive and the inner one is negative also some minor contribution by chloride ions which are negative and some proteins which are negatively charged okay so these are the reasons why the outer surface of the cell is positively charged and the inner one is negatively charged in the resting membrane potential you know at this time the nerve is in a resting stage so no impulse is being conducted okay now what happens is an impulse travels through the nerve okay so the phase of depolarization starts an action potential comes now what happens is you can see that these sodium channels open up when these sodium channels open up plenty of sodium enters inside the cell which in turn gives rise to a positive potential right so this becomes positive i told you here also i'm again telling you this is the phase of depolarization this is going from negative to positive side due to the sodium ions okay very clear no doubts good so this is the phase of depolarization sodium channels open sodium enters inside and potential becomes positive right now what is the third stage that is repolarization now what happens in the repolarization state look now what happens in repolarization is that the nerve has to go back to its negative resting membrane potential right but what happens is instead of the sodium that had entered inside the cell now the potassium is going out okay and potassium also contains a positive charge and the cell will definitely go into a negative potential right so the cell goes into a negative potential and this is the repolarization but the concentration of ions is disturbed right now it is not the same as the resting membrane potential which had more of potassium inside and more of sodium outside see here that's not the case so look here this is the repolarization state okay sodium sorry potassium ions are going out and the cell is coming back from positive to negative potential right this is the stage of repolarization now what happens in this stage of hyperpolarization is that this ion balance which was disturbed will come back and thus give rise to resting state again see what happens here the sodium potassium ATPase is working and now this throws more sodium out and pulls potassium in which corrects the ion imbalance and the cell again goes into this resting membrane potential which i told you is negative okay so what happens the cell again goes into a negative resting membrane potential and with the normal configuration of ions that is more potassium inside and more sodium outside so in the repolarization only first the neuron goes back 
up to almost 70 millivolts but the ion balance is disturbed and in this hyperpolarization state it goes up to first 90 millivolt and then back to minus 70 millivolt by what by changing this configuration of the ions okay so this was conduction of no impulse this is a quick revision here look this is the resting membrane potential here a stimulus is fired the sodium channels activate and the neuron is depolarized that is towards the positive side then what happens sodium channels deactivate now and potassium channels activate which bring the potential back towards positive side and this is the repolarization state but then what happens here from this point to this point all the channels reach steady state that is the sodium potassium AT phase works and the ion balance is restored and this is the repolarization state okay so this is your nerve conduction now what we have to learn about is the transmission of nerve impulse. This is nerve 1 and this is nerve 2. Now this impulse has to be conducted from nerve 1 to nerve 2. And this is known as transmission of nerve impulse. And for this transmission, there is a structure known as synapse. Okay, this synapse. What does a synapse contain? How it works? That is what we'll study next. Now look, a synapse consists of three things, three structures. A presynaptic membrane, synaptic cleft, and a postsynaptic membrane. So, in a synapse, there is a presynaptic membrane, a synaptic cleft, and a postsynaptic membrane. What does all of this mean? It is also very, very simple. Just look at this diagram. See, this is the presynaptic membrane. Pre means pehle, first. So first membrane is this. Synapse pehle wali membrane is this. This is the presynaptic membrane. Synapse ke baad is the postsynaptic membrane. Post means baad mein, okay? So this is a postsynaptic membrane. Where is it? Here is it. This membrane is known as the postsynaptic membrane. And this space is known as the synaptic cleft. The space between these two membranes is the synaptic cleft. Very simple, right? Presynaptic postsynaptic and the synaptic cleft that is what the synapse is made up of okay talking about the definition it is nothing but it is a junctional region between two neurons where the impulse is transferred from one neuron to another neuron okay a junction of two neurons is a synapse okay now how does this synaptic transmission occur see what happens first of all let us study a bit about the structure of the synapse in detail and then the working of the synapse will be very easy. Okay, so let's see what are these structures. Now, the first structure here you can see is these channels which are voltage gated calcium channels. Okay, I will talk about it in detail and it will get imprinted in your mind. So don't worry about this. So this is a voltage gated calcium channel, right? Now these little pouch like structures are known as synaptic vesicles okay vesicle is just like a pouch okay so in this vesicle in this pouch this is the money what is the money this is neurotransmitter our neurotransmitter is our money in the pouch okay the synaptic vesicle contains neurotransmitters and these are the postsynaptic receptors receptors are for this neurotransmitter this neurotransmitter is generated and this there is a receptor present which will in turn excite this neuron we will talk about the working okay firstly you just have to understand the structure these are the voltage gated calcium channels these are synaptic vesicles inside the synaptic vesicles is a neurotransmitter and these are the post synaptic receptors and this is the synaptic cleft where everything is happening right now let's study about the working of the synapse how the nerve impulses transmitted from one nerve to another so what happens is when action potential develops in this presynaptic membrane here action potential has come from here from this nerve conduction that i told you right now it has to travel go into this nerve so here what happens these voltage gated calcium channels open up once these channels open up a lot of calcium enters inside this neuron the presynaptic neuron right and this calcium in turn causes fusion of these vesicles with this membrane these vesicles come and fuse with this membrane and in turn releasing this neurotransmitter which was present in them in this cleft okay so this cleft is full of neuro neurotransmitter 
there are many neurotransmitters i'll talk about them what does this neurotransmitter do this works like a postman okay this brings these impulses and just sits here on the receptors okay tells them that an action potential has arrived and now you have to depolarize and conduct the impulse forward okay so these neurotransmitters come and sit on these receptors and these receptors get activated and the nerve conduction through the action potential starts in this neuron also which i told you goes through the stages of polarization depolarization and repolarization right so this is the transmission of nerve impulse now a bit about these neurotransmitters so this chemical is a very important chemical in the body these neurotransmitters so it is by virtue of these neurotransmitters that technically the impulse is being taken from one neuron to another so they are very important now these neurotransmitters can be excitatory or inhibitory right so excitatory are acetylcholine you just have to remember the names okay acetylcholine norepinephrine or noradrenaline we call it and glutamate these are excitatory neurotransmitters okay and the inhibitory neurotransmitters are gaba which is gamma amino butyric acid then dopamine serotonin which is being talked about a lot these days and glycine okay so these are the excitatory and inhibitory neurotransmitters okay which respectively give rise to an excitatory potential and an inhibitory potential okay so with this i think we're done with this topic it is a bit difficult topic but i hope that i have made my point clear and you don't have any confusions if you still have any doubts you can write to me in the comment section i'll be very happy to help you out also if you guys want me to do an mcq session with you guys do let me know in the comment section so with this we come to the end of today's video so i'll see you in the next video till then keep studying and if you find these videos helpful do not forget to like share comment and subscribe to my channel goodbye see you with an another interesting topic